All right, welcome to an edition of uh, Beginner Breakdown. I'm your host, Mike Comer. Thought we'd open up to the uh, YouTube comments today. All right, we got one from uh, Grills420 here. He says, how easy was the 1998 Scholastic Tournament? All right, so let's check it out, all right? All right, so this was 1998. I had the black pieces against uh, Chris Braun here. All right. And in Scholastic Chess, there's a lot of uh, slamming of the pieces. So, so I have to teach you guys when to slam the pieces, when not to slam the pieces, OK? And maybe even how to trash talk. All right, so here we go. So he starts out E4. He was rated 1,100. I was rated 1,661 at the time. Black plays C5. So bishop to B5. Not very good. All right? Bishop in my opponent's territory, not really attacking anything. How should we go about attacking it? Anybody got any suggestions? Yes. Why not just A6? And why not A6? Why not? All right. And we wouldn't slam that move. <laughs> and then he plays the worst move. All right. It gets my day off to a pretty easy start. And this is a move you can just go ahead and slam. All right, what move? Yeah, all right. Kevin slammed it on the board. B5. It's like there's no coming back from this. All right. So, so he takes, I take. There's no need to slam when you take the bishop. He fell for the trap. And it wasn't really wasn't much of a trap. I just attacked it, and uh, he went the wrong way. So that's a very common way to do um, with the bishop. Not so, so much in that position, but... It gets trapped like that a lot, so, so be wary of that. All right, so knight attacks the pawn. You can just push it. So he goes back. <laughs> Going back to b1. He probably, probably should just go, go here, kind of keep it centralized. Just going backwards isn't making much progress. So attack the pawn, and now d3. All right, notice that this pawn is in a pin here, right? Because if he moves it, um, let's say he moves it, then I'll take, okay? But do we really want to move our F pawn here to try to entice him to take it? The answer is no. We don't really want to ever be moving our F pawn because look, he would have fallen for our trap, but what move does white play now to regain a lot of momentum here? Queen h5, check. All right, that's why it's very risky to be moving that f pawn in the opening. Because take, take, don't even take the rook, just go for checkmate. Okay? All right. So we just want to leave that alone and we'll just uh, get our other bishop out here. Okay? So knight up, bishop up, gets his knight out. So we're getting our pieces out. We're playing good, get castled. And now we can just try to trade pieces. Because we're up material, we'll just try to trade. So d5, so he attacks our knight, OK? So he just attacked our knight. The simplest solution is just move the knight. We don't need to go about like making threats you know, that are uh, equal or greater than his. And this is actually worse if we would try to push our pawn here because he would take our knight, we take his knight, but then he get our bishop, okay? And then, okay, and then we would take with check, all right? All right, fine, we'll take it all the way through then, Mario, all right. So, so take, take, bish, pawn takes, now we get check, okay? And then he'll take, and then you want to take our, this pawn then? Well, ARS is going to take the rook. Take the rook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so luckily it's black to move, so he'll take. And you see how now I have one, two, three, four, five, six pawns. And he also has six pawns. And we each have uh, five pieces. Okay, so we went from being up a bishop, even though we got that check in, it really didn't work out too well for us. Okay, so you know, when people just attack you, just do the simple solution. Retreat, okay? I know it's not fun, but sometimes you just have to do it. 
All right, so takes, knight back. So we can just offer more trades here because we're winning. So all trades are good. Bishop up. So now he attacks our knight. But now we can go ahead and take the knight because if you would take our knight, how would we take back? With the bishop. With the bishop. And we'd still maintain our peace advantage. Excellent, okay? All right, so he takes knight back. So now bishop takes pawn, okay? So he's feeling good. But now what move can you go ahead and slam here? Even if it's not the best move on the board, you can still go ahead and slam it. Oh, I would quietly put queen b5. So Kevin says quietly. Like, I'm not up to anything here. <laughs> so the bishop is attacked, but what else is, is attacked here? Threatening checkmate. Queen takes g2, checkmate. This actually, according to the computer, is not the best move. He says the best, the computer says the best move is bishop takes, and then after king takes, then you get the check. Yeah. But I don't agree with it. All right, so queen, threatens mate, and the bishop. So what is a great move for white to not drop a piece, and more importantly, not get checkmated here? So anywhere, well, anywhere we move the rook, unfortunately, checkmate. So we have to deal with that checkmate first and foremost. Queen f3. Queen f3, excellent. So queen f3, well, obviously protects g2, and then it's attacking this bishop through an x-ray. So after queen takes bishop, queen takes, pawn takes. And so now... Chris gets an idea. Instead of just taking the pawn, which he probably should have, and eliminating that threat, he decides, I'm going to put that pawn in a pin. But he moves the wrong rook here. He moves this rook. All right, so what, what move do I have? Which probably isn't the best. The best move probably is just flat out C2 and just have a pass pawn, okay? But I decide I'm going to just take forking the rooks. Because you see, if he takes my queen, I get my queen right back, plus a rook with check even. So it's, it's fantastic. All right? So, so when he takes, he'll just take back, okay? And so my queen is hanging. So I should move my queen. But I'm like one of those guys that are like you, like I want to make a threat greater or equal than this. So he's threatening my queen, right? So, I, so, so there's two pieces of mine that can threaten the enemy queen. This rook and this rook. Which rook should I attack the queen with if that's really what I want to do? Did you play uh, queen d4? Right. Queen to d4. That, that, yeah, yeah. Instead, I try rook A to B8, not rook F, or else if I play rook F to B8, I lose a piece. Because he'll just come down and take my rook with check. Excellent. And then when I take, he'll take. And now look, he's got two rooks, and I got a rook and a knight. So I'm not doing very well. So luckily I put, played the uh, rook A to B8, so when he takes it, what, mo I don't, what move do you think I play? I don't take this queen back right away. I have an in-between move here. Uh, queen takes F2. Do I just want to just say, I forget, I don't want to be state champion this year. <laughs> How about queen takes C1 check? And then rook takes, rook takes. All right, so now he's, he's getting behind the pawn. So now I just bring my knight over, and uh, I have ideas to trap the king behind here first. But then I get bored with that idea and decide, hey, I'm going to just win this pawn as fast as I can. So I get behind the pawn, 
Luckily, he plays d4, which makes this next move almost pretty obvious. Yeah, all right, knight to c6, the fork. So a take with check, king b3, knight attacks the rook, rook here. So, so how do I go about winning here? Oh, knight to, um, knight to c5. Knight to c5, Mario beat you to the punch. Yeah, knight to c5, check, goes there. I take with the knight. And he plays king to b5, and then what move do I play to make him resign here? Knight to c7, check. So king up. Do I want to trade rooks in this position? The answer is obvious, yes. And then take, take, and then just to be funny, I play f6, because it's like I can play it now. I'm so good. But I play f5, and, and game's over. I'm just going to bring my king up and... Uh, eat all these pawns, get four queens, and, and live the life. So I'm 1-0 going into round two. And in round uh, two, I get paired against the freshman sensation, Anthony Burek. All right, so tough game here. So I had the, uh, the white pieces here. And it was, uh, it was a good one. So e4, c6, d4, d5, this is the uh, Karo Khan. Knight c3. I do not play the Karo Khan like I played it in this game, okay? This, so if you're like, oh, just play the Karo Khan against Kum, or he doesn't know how to play against it, please be my guest, okay? <laughs> I guarantee you I will not be playing like I played it in 1998. <laughs> All right. This is not ideal, this structure. <laughs> All right. So. What structure? Yes, this bishop, the knight. I'm trying to get my bishop trap, kind of, I guess, just like the old guy. And then queen takes. So I protect the pawn. That was good. That was good. So I'm all about trades, all about trades. And so it's like, yeah, I got the pawn fork. But why doesn't this pawn fork work at all? What does black simply play here to... Swap out the queens, yes. You're just trading queens. Don't be afraid to ever trade a queen for a queen. I like to see a lot of people, oh, I don't want to trade my queen. Well, if you're just trading your queen for queen, it's perfectly acceptable. I mean, you, nothing gained, nothing lost. Just go about with the game. It's better to trade queens than to lose a knight. Like, for instance, if you like played a queen back, and they took, and then you took, you'd be down a whole knight, but hey, you'd have your precious queen, okay? Good luck, all right? All right, so yeah, just swapped out the queens. All right, so knight there, of course I'm gonna take it, you know. All right, so now I got a good knight. Luckily, I read uh, Jeremy Silman's How to Reassess Your Chess in uh, the summer before the state championship. So I know exactly what to do with my knight, and thank God I, I read it, or else I probably would've just played, uh, oh, you wanna trade the knight for the bishop? <laughs> And uh, I wouldn't be standing here today. All right, so what move, where do, I, where do you think I ultimately want to get my knight to here? What's a great square for this knight? Center square. All right, yeah, agreed, a center square. So d4, but is that his end? Is that his end game? All right, yeah, we'll keep going to d6. We'll play f4 first. All right, so A6, so now he's putting me to the test. You really want to go there? Well, yes, I want to go there. All right, B5. So, so now my knight obviously wants to get to F7, huh? I mean, that'd be pretty cool, right? But the bishop's protecting it, right? So how can I try to get that bishop off a G6? Any ideas? Yes. H4. H4. Unfortunately, look at what h4 runs into here. h5. No. Oh, yeah. And, and before anybody says anything, there's no need to castle in this position. My king is awesome. In the, as long as I don't like, oh, I'm going right here on the light squares, you know, this would not be good, okay? Because then I just blew my state championship, okay? All right, but 
if you're afraid you're going to you know, do something really, really dubious, then fine, get castled. But you want your king, as we'll see, really up in the center here in these end games, okay? And look, if, you're, if your opponent only has a light square bishop, guess what? Hey, let's not put them on light squares. Let's put them on f2, then e3, okay? Make sense? All right, good, 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 good. All right, so instead of h4, we'll try to move g4, preparing f5 here, okay? All right, but he plays f5. But how many... So, so when he plays f5 here, it's a mistake because we have a tactic. This pawn is now overloaded. He's doing too much, and he's, he's not competent, okay? So, so when we take, bishop takes, remove the defender of... Uh, d5 and we'll take with check everybody see how that pawn just had too much going for it after take it couldn't it couldn't stand up to the pressure obviously if it takes now rook would just take the pawn so he took with the bishop takes takes check and now most importantly what do i have in this position here a pass pawn excellent gotta be very careful with these pass pawns they're good King up. So now, should I castle? No. no just get, yeah, now I can play the e2, and I don't have to worry about getting checked, okay? So he's like, I want the file. So should I just say, oh, okay, sir, you can have it. Sorry. Sorry for being on that file. No. We want that file, so we play rook, the other rook, to try to control it, okay? So rook takes, rook takes. Now g5, okay? So this is a huge move for him, all right? Because if he, I take and he takes, how am I going to defend this pawn? I can't. I'm done. See ya. All right, so, so I protect it with f3. So now he's offering the rook trade. I probably should have thought about it more. Maybe, maybe rook here is good. Um, I just don't know. So I thought, hey, I got a pass pawn. I'm the best. Let's just take it, and this, this should be an easy victory because I got a pass pawn, and he doesn't. But I decided to play the worst move ever, playing for hope chess here with h4, hoping that he takes. Then I play here, here, take, here, take, 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 and then I'm the best. All right, but he's like, I'm better than this. And I want my own pass pawn. And I want check. So this would be a great time to slam the piece and say, check. <laughs> and it's like, oh, man. And now, now I'm in a lot of trouble here, all right? So I, I try to create another pass pawn. I say, well, if I got two pass pawns, I can't lose, right? All right, so it's on. But, but it's going to be tough because see this king's, king's pretty bad. And so now um, I'm not liking this, okay? You have to go 4-0 to become state champion. I'm a senior because I didn't start playing chess until my sophomore year. So I owe, this is my third crack at state championship. And uh, this is the only time I can do it, right, because I'm a senior. So three and a half isn't going to cut it. So... How am I going to get one of these pawns to turn into a queen? Let's play c5. Let's play c5. <laughs> Just give him, hey, you want this pass pawn, buddy? <laughs> He'll be like, okay. And then you might as well give him the other You gave him one, you might as well give him the other one, right? <laughs> and, uh, and that wouldn't work out very well. <laughs> yeah, 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 I might as well just, uh, I'm going to withdraw anyway, so if I don't win, so why not? All right, so king f2. All right, king back. So c5. So now c5, because now if he plays here, as we'll see in a minute here. So it's looking like we're just going back and forth, so I got to figure out something out quick. Anybody got anything? Oh. 
Excellent. I got to get him. I got to get him up here. But first, I can prevent him from coming here. What's the only decent move I have to prevent him from coming to d7? e6. Excellent. And now it's like, well, I'm either going to win or lose. I'd love to tell you I calculated it out. I probably did, or else I probably wouldn't have played it, but you never know. Just, you got to just go for it. Because now king's coming in, so king to e3, king back. So now, do I go? So, so we could go back and forth all day here, right? And draw, right? Or you got to just go for it, right? Bring the king up. Because the only way he's going to turn into a queen is if he gets escorted by his king. All right, can, can he play g3 here yet? No, because he's, I can, my king could still catch it. Yeah, he's in, I'm in, he's in the box, yeah. So now, play king e5. And now, he, he really, I really should just play e7 now, but I, I didn't want him any chance of him getting to his king back to e8 to stymie my plans. So I play king up, and he pushes that pawn, always pushes so fast. So now, he, so, so now he gets a queen, but I get the queen with check, yeah, check. Check is so powerful. So he takes, and now we got a great check to win this pawn. So now we got a pass pawn. And so now he's like, hey, he's looking for a check. He can't wait to play check. So he finds this check, but we have something excellent to play. It's called a... Yeah, a cross check. And uh, uh oh. So he takes, take with check, and then just remove all hope by taking that, that pawn. And, uh, and so I escaped with the uh, victory here, okay? And so now we're on to uh, round three. And thanks to uh, the tournament director, uh, Mr. Bauer, who's been doing this for a very long time and still is. He does accelerated pairings. And then in round three, he deaccelerates them. What accelerated pairings are, essentially, he gives invisible points to the top half of the field for the first two rounds and then takes them away. Meaning the bottom half had uh, played other people in the bottom half in the first two rounds. So there was a lot of people rated 550 or thereabouts. 2-0 and oh, and in prime position to win the championship. But unfortunately, they ran into a slew of good players, and um, it didn't work out very well for them. So, so this game, we'll, we'll try to breeze through here so we can get to the classic matchup at the end here. All right. So uh, flip the board here. So I had the black pieces against my opponent rated 550, who was 2-0. and oh. <laughs> He's probably calling his mom up. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way. I'm halfway there to the state title. So let's see how he does here. All right. So far, so good. I mean, not winning, not losing. So takes, takes. Big check. G3. Just take it. Why didn't I play queen to e4 check? <laughs> yeah, which would have been pretty good. I just, I just couldn't wait to take that pawn. I guess I just like I could play whatever I want. I'm playing a 550. What do I care? All right, all right. We got Winston here to witness this. All right. <laughs> Thank you for coming, <laughs> Winston and Wilson. All right. Bishop takes. All right. So so far so good. Attack my pawn here. So I just eliminate the threat, check. And now he's got four pawns, and these are uh, isolated. And I got uh, you know, six pawns with one isolated. So I'm feeling pretty good. Castles, bishop protects. So you think he should play the check? Of course, right? Check. 
But do you think I, I don't mind that my king is in the center here? I think he's doing okay. So bishop, so he's threatening uh, the discovery here. So I, I try to challenge the e-file here. So okay, so he's got his big discovery in. Let's see if it, if it matters. Rook takes, rook takes. I can just take. And now when he takes, I got this pass pawn now, okay? So life is pretty good. So okay, so challenge the, uh, the e-file again. And so now he gives me this big check. King up, h4, rook attacks the pawn, and king up. Check him. Check him. OK, so, so notice what he just played here. He just played king to b, or g2. So what did he just put his king in the same line as? The bishop, right. So, so this is a very fragile place for this king. So the last thing I want to do is get that king off of there, OK? But I play him anyway, all right? <laughs> Check. But he stays on the line. I can't resist winning a pawn. So you were right, Winston. All right. All right, so rook attacks the pawn. All right, so I got this whole thing set up. All right. So, so what move? Do you think I should protect this pawn? Oh, wow, what, what'd you got, Winston? King c5 check. King c5 check doesn't win anything. Now you play a5. <laughs> and then when he plays, rook takes pawn check. What you got? King b5 check. Excellent. And you see how that's much better than, um, than just protecting a pawn? All right. So king and then takes, and then the game is essentially over. over. Yes. And then you just take all his stuff and... Uh, he has to resign. All right. <laughs> All right, and now we got the final round game, the championship game. I've got the uh, white pieces against the defending state champion here. Get my, get my notation. All right, it starts out e4, d6, d4. Knight f6, attacks the pawn, so we protect it. G6, bishop up, bishop g7. All right, so, so now we play f3 to prevent this knight from ever getting to g4 and uh, ruining our uh, queen and bishop uh, battery here. All right, so obviously we play queen to d2 here. And now they play e5. All right, so bring our knight to protect the pawn here, and I castles into it. So obviously, what move do we make? What move have we been leading up to here? Yes, castle queen side. All right, our bishop h6. Yeah, bishop h6. Okay, you want to get that as soon as you can. So knight e8, bishop takes, knight takes. And now we can castle queenside, OK? Pawn takes d4, knight takes, knight c5, g4. All right, knight g to e6, and now h4. We want to just pawn storm all our pawns up and get them, OK? So queen to f6. So with queen to f6 here, He's threatening our knight, and what else? Pawn. This, this pawn, OK. So when I play knight c to e2, I'm letting him take this. And well, well, he can't take it now, obviously, right? Or else things would be very, very dicey. So after knight takes, remove the defender, I should take back with the, uh, knight. the knight, which I do, all right. So, so when he plays knight to e6 here, and now when he takes and queen takes, now Robert has a decision here. Should he take the f pawn, okay? That leads uh, f pawn, my 
the F line open for my rooks? Or should we take the queen and not worry about getting checkmated over here? Any ideas? Take the queen. <laughs> take the queen. <laughs> take the queen. All right. There's no right or wrong answer. It just depends on how you assess the situation. You know, if somebody's going to give me a free pawn, you know, I, I, might, I, might, I might just have to take it. But, you know, you don't want to get checkmated. So you just take the queens and just say, I'll beat you in the end game. So that's what he does, okay? So let's check it out here. So he brings the bishop out, offering the trade. No trade. King to g7. So f4, h6. Play f4, might as well play f5. Try to break it open here. Uh -huh. He retreats. I bring my king up. Rook a to e8. Attacks the pawn. But it's protected. So rook f1 here. Bishop c6, so he's getting everybody on this pawn here. So now I get a check in, all right? Check, yes, excellent. All right? And he plays back to h7 here, which is pivotal. King to d3, rook to e5. So I protect the pawn some more, and he plays g5. So... So his ideas with g5 is to get his king here and here and then back. Yeah. So what move do I play here? You got any ideas? H5. H5. It looks tempting to take this, huh? Because then you get check, but then I just lose that pawn. Okay? Pawns are precious. Pawns are precious. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. You should, you should be up here. Uh, Go, go teaching me. All right. So h5 here, okay? So rook to d8 here. Bring my pawn up. b6. b4. Bishop back. King e3. Rook d to e8. b5. All right. So, so now he tries to get... He sees that he's not doing anything really spectacular on this e-file. Even though he's got all his, all his pieces attacking this, I essentially have three people at protecting. So he, he decides, hey, I gotta, get, I gotta get something else opened here. And uh, so he does. So what move do you think he automatically plays? He might even slam it here, because it's, it's pretty strong. What move would you slam here? Rook takes b5. Uh, that was a joke. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Rook to a8, right? He just got this whole a file open, and now I want a rook on it to do some checking, okay? Check. All right. Sound good? Yeah. All right. That's where they belong. All right. But I decide I'm going to be really funny. When he checks me, I'm going to put my bishop in a pin. So I play bishop here. Check. What? Bishop there. All right. So maybe not the best idea, but it got the job done. That way my king gets to stay on this third rank, defending it, and, uh, and so forth. All right, so he decides, all right, he's got to find a different way to... Uh, he's attacking a pawn now. Yep, so what move do I play to, to stop that? Because he is attacking my pawn now. Yes. King f3. Yep, king f3 is what, what's played. That's four king, you're only self of two pawns. <laughs> yes. So bishop to e6. All right, so now he's got a serious attack here. Does everybody see what his attack is here? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so his threat is bishop takes, if I, if I can even waste the move here. Bishop takes, and you're like, what? Rook takes, and then rook takes bishop. Notice I can't play bishop takes bishop because um, check. It, it's check. I'm in a pin. Excellent. Okay, so, so what move do I have to play here then? 
or else my whole position crumbles and I'm not state champion. Yep. Excellent. Rook to C1. It's what I thought I would play, but I played Rook to D1. You see, okay, I'm, that's because, because yeah, if he takes and I take, my rook, my rook is protected. But rook c1 also works. And you know what? After he plays rook to c5, I'm like, yeah, I'll just, I'll, I, I like it better on c1 anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so, okay, so rook to b3. You see what he's doing? All right. So now I go rook c2, bishop to d7, rook to d2. So I'm max protecting my stuff here, my stuff. So rook to a3, and I bet everybody's missing a good move I have here, okay? All right, and, and I miss it too, okay? I miss it too. All right, well, he finally sees it, but, but I miss it, and... And you missed it until I pointed it out. And so now he plays, I play rook to d5, and he is really, really excited. And so he takes here. He's got too much class to slam anything. And now it's like, oh, man, I just blew my whole chance at championship. Unless I can do something really, really quick here. Winston, he found the move for the comeback. Wilson, yeah, Winston hasn't found nothing. You need to start looking. So it looks like white is in dire straits here. Uh, black has finally broken through, one of crucial pawn. My bishop is in a pin, and uh, my, rook, my rook can't, oh, you see a check? Yeah. Who could possibly check this king so far away here? E5. E5 check, okay. So, so, do you think when I was playing, I'm like, yeah, check, I'm the best? Or I think it's pure desperation. Yeah, pure desperation, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, Robert unfortunately doesn't know he's in check, because I was like, oh, I just pushed my pawn, I'm, I'm in trouble, <laughs> I'm in a lot of trouble. And then, so he's like, I am going to win your rook. <laughs> he can't move there. But he touched his bishop, right? Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. So where does his bishop have to go? F5. F5. Yep. <laughs> and so what do you think I played? Should I, should I slam that one? Yeah, yeah you slam it. <laughs> it's like, I got your bishop. All right, but the game's not over yet. Because now he's like, I'm going to go get that pawn. Rook f4, check. So if anybody's ever played poker, they're familiar with a term called tilt. It's when you just lost a big pot or a big, uh, big amount of money or made the wrong play. And when your brain is like that, guess what? You're going to make more bad decisions. So, so when I was playing check, all I could tell myself is, hey, dude, just keep yourself in the pin. It's going to be great. Just keep yourself in the pin. So I kept myself in the pin. And so he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm making a comeback here. So now what move can I make to just end his uh, dreams here of back-to-back -back state titles? Anybody got an idea? Yes. Yeah, king to g4. That's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, king g4. Oh, yeah, just pin. Yeah, yeah, because he's, he's still in the pin. So then rook takes. Rook takes. Pawn takes e5. Okay. So how would be the only way I could ever lose this? I mean, it'd be tough, but... He's got one piece that could do the trick, right? This guy. I played it 
Trade it off. Yeah, so what move do we play here? Rook f3. Game over, right? Because there's no way I'm losing this game from here. Right? All right, so, so that's a very important lesson to learn. You know, if they uh, touch a piece, whether they want to move it or not, if they have a legal move with it, they have to. And always enforce it. You can be state champion if you do, okay? Okay, okay great. All right. all right, well, thank you all for coming and watching uh, the 1998 uh, Missouri Scholastic State Championship. Good.